Hi, in this video we're going to look at forming and solving some quadratic equations in what's called the AO3 style. These just mean um, more applied questions, not just using the basic skills that you've got for quadratics in terms of um, solving, factorising, but it'll be a more complex type of um, question. It's going to be asking you to do something which involves quadratics, but it might not tell you that that's what the situation is going to be. Let's have a look at an example, and we'll be able to explain it in more detail. The types of things that we're going to go through in this video are the idea of forming an equation, so taking a problem, turning it into something that looks more like um, a maths question that we know how what to do with. We're then going to solve the quadratic, and we might see how the factors relate to the graphs of the quadratic, um, if that's appropriate. So, in this question, we've got an example here. It says uh, all the lengths in this diagram are in centimetres, but you can see straight away that none of them are numbers. We've got a load of algebra going on here. It then says, given that the shaded area of the diagram is 142 centimetres squared, show that this quadratic. Now, on the face of it, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. You're going to have to put a lot of kind of different strands of your mathematical knowledge together here and that's why these are um, the harder questions you, they tend to be five six markers um, and it really does separate those with a little understanding to those that actually really know what they're doing and um, hopefully this video is going to help you be one of the uh, second types of students right let's have a look then um, it says area so first of all, we're interested in the shaded area. So to work out the shaded area, I've got this large rectangle here. Okay, so I can work out the area of that. I could take away the area of the small white rectangle in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is say, well, let's work out the area of the large rectangle. So large is going to be 3x plus 1, multiplied by 2x plus 2. OK, so if I multiply my brackets out, then I will end up with 6x squared. Uh, my outside pair will give me plus 6x. My inside pair plus another 2x. And my last pair, plus 2. Um, so that's the large rectangle, the small white rectangle. So the small is going to be 2x multiplied by x. So that's going to give me uh, 2x squared. And I need to take the small one away from the big one. So 6x squared uh, plus 6x plus 2x plus 2. Take away the 2x squared gives me, so the area of my rectangle is going to be 4x squared. At this point, I'm also going to collect these two terms here together. So plus 8x plus 2. Right, OK. So I've formed some sort of quadratic. Um, it doesn't look anything like what I'm being asked to show. Um, so, OK, well, let's just keep going. Let's kind of stick with it. So the area that I've got is 4x squared plus 8x plus 2. Now, in the question, it told us that the area is 142 centimetres squared. So let's make that equal to 142. So 4x squared plus 8x plus 2 equals 142. Right, okay, well, it's still not looking a huge amount like this. Um, so whenever we're doing anything to do with quadratics, um, more often than not, we, we like it to equal zero. And in fact, the question says, show that this equals zero. So I'm going to rearrange my formula, um, sorry, my expression here, my, my equation, sorry, my equation. Um, I'm going to take 142 away from both sides. So let's have 4x squared plus 8x. Um, taking 142 away leaves me with minus 140 equals 0. Right, OK. We, we're starting to get somewhere close now, I think. Um, let's see. What do we have different between 
this that we're trying to show and what we've got here. Well, this is just an x squared. I've got four lots of x squared. This is a 2x and this is an 8x. And this is minus 35 and this is minus 140. I think I can take a factor of 4 out of this. So I can say 4 lots of. So I'm taking a factor of 4 out of each term. x squared plus. All right, 4 times something gives me 8x. That's going to be 2x. 4 times something gives me uh, minus 140. Well, if I half it and half it again, I can do it that way. And say so that gives me minus 35 equals 0. And finally, um, if I divide both sides by 4, I can say I've got x squared plus 2x minus 35 equals 0. And this is what it was asking for in the question. So we, we've demonstrated um, that part of it. Now, there were lots of steps to go through there to get to that point. Um, we formed an equation. We took one quadratic away. From the other so we formed an equation here we've got a quadratic we took away another part that gave us our area we read the question again and we realized that our area was equal to something so we put it equal we then started to look at what it was asking us to show that we made it equal to zero we then looked again to see if there was something that we can do we realized we could take a factor of four out and therefore we got the answer. Now, these questions are not easy, but there is plenty that you can have a go at, and you will pick up marks all the way through, even if you don't get to the end. So it's well worth having a go at these. Right, I want you to have a go at one here. Um, I'm going to talk very quickly about what it is that it's asking you to do, um, and then you can pause the video, have a go, and see if you can work out the answer. So here we've got a right-angled triangle. So P, Q, R is a right angle triangle. We've got lengths of X, X minus 2 and X minus 1. Part A says use Pythagoras' theorem to write down an equation in X. So it's straight away asking you to use Pythagoras. Um, and I'm hoping you remember what that is. You've then been show it, showing that it is simplifies to X squared minus 6X plus 5 equals 0. Similar to the example. We're then going to have a go at solving this by factorising it and therefore find the lengths of the sides of the triangle here. Okay, so pause the video, have a go, and I'll come back in a second. Right, okay, so let's have a little look then. Um, first of all, I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to write down the equation in x, and we'll go through the rest of it from there. Um, so we remember that c squared equals a squared plus b b squared. Um, C has to be the hypotenuse. The other two sides, it doesn't make any difference. So what we've got here is that x squared equals x minus 1 squared plus x minus 2 squared. At this point, it's important to remember that these brackets here, you can't just do x squared minus 1 squared, you've got to remember that this is x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. So again, you may well write that out as x squared plus x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 plus x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. Okay, so you may have done that. Um, I'm going to keep going. So we've got x squared equals, uh, multiplying out my first bracket here, so I'll end up with um, an x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's the first part, and I'll keep it in brackets for now, just so we can see where these bits are coming from. Plus, and then my second lot of brackets expanded out will give me x squared um, minus 4x plus 4. Okay, collect all my like terms together, so x squared equals, um, that's a bracket there, not a 6, um, 2x squared. I've got minus 2x, minus another 4x, so minus 6x, and I've got 1 plus 4, which is 5, plus 5. And I can rearrange this now. I can take x squared from both sides, which gives me 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, which is what it asked for in the first part of the question.
It then went on to ask us to solve this. So solving it, I'll do it over here, that means that we have to uh, then factorise our new expression. Plus 5 equals 0. Um, so we're looking for remembering that we need to have numbers that multiply together to give us 5 and add together to give us minus 6. Well, that's got to be minus 5 and minus 1. So x minus 1 x minus 5. The two different values that we could get for x are x equals 1 and x equals 5. Okay, let's just have a little look then, think what's happening here. Um, why did I get these answers? Well, each bracket could in turn be 0. So if this was 0, then you'd have 0 multiplied by something equals 0, or you could have something multiplied by 0 equaling 0. So I'm taking each bracket at a time, saying, what if this was 0? How can I make that 0? And here, the same. So I've got two different solutions for x. Remembering that all this means is that we've got two different roots. Our quadratic graph would actually cross at 1 and 5, something like this. OK, um, we don't need to draw a graph at this point, but just so that it kind of keeps it fresh in our mind what's going on, that's what's happening. Now, thinking about this, back at our question, we can't possibly have x being equal to 1. It doesn't make any sense. If I substitute 1 in here, it means I have a hypotenuse of 1. It means that rq would be, well, 1 take 1 is 0, and pq would be minus 1. It's just nonsense, utter nonsense. So the only thing it can be, x could be 5, which would mean that... Um, our P would be 5, our Q would be 4, and PQ would be 3. And these are all centimetres. If you've got this far, really well done. This is a, a good six marks, if not seven, for doing a, a question like this. There's a lot of things that need to be done. Um, a lot of reasoning, a lot of understanding, but it's well worth going through these sorts of questions, picking them out from your exam packs, having a go at them, because um, you can pick up marks all the way through. If you've been making revision notes um, throughout these series of videos, this is the sorts of things that I'll be doing for these sorts of questions. I'll be thinking, look for a way to form an equation. So whenever you've got these wordy sorts of questions or a picture that you're not quite sure what to do, see if you can form some sort of algebraic equation. If it turns out to be quadratic, then in order to solve it, we're going to have to factorise it first. If the equation's already equal to zero, then solve each bracket for x. If it isn't, like the last one that we saw, or in the first example that we saw, rearrange it to make it equal to zero before having a go at factorising and solving. OK, as ever with all these videos, I'm wishing you all the best of luck in your GCSEs or any other exams that you might be studying for. Um, keep watching the videos. Send a message via at Tupton Maths if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to have a go at making. Um, otherwise, good luck. See you soon. Bye.